Okay, we're on the record. This is State of Idaho v. Brian Koberger, case number CR2922805. Mr. Koberger is in the court. He is represented by Ms. Taylor, Mr. Lobston, and Ms. Massett. The state is represented by Mr. Thompson and Ms. Jennings, also Mr. Nye and Ms. Beatty. And we're here for some motions, discussions. And before we get there, I want to address, I mean really everybody, about the revised amended dissemination order. Apparently there's some misunderstanding about who it applies to and who it doesn't apply to. Because what I thought, and this is 100% my responsibility, I use the term agents. And the revised order says that the prosecutor, prosecuting attorneys, defense attorneys, any agents of the prosecuting attorneys and defense attorneys are affected by this order. Apparently some of the media interpreted that as it doesn't apply to law enforcement, but it does. So law enforcement is, they are agents of the prosecuting attorneys. Now I'm going to issue another order, another revised order, just to make sure that that is clear. Because people seem to be very confused about that. Agent, definition of an agent is one that acts or has the power or authority to act. Another definition is one empowered to act for or represent another. So I'm going to include law enforcement for the prosecutor, prosecuting attorneys, agent, agents, and for the defense attorneys, investigators. So it's clear. I think it's sort of doubling down on the definition, but apparently that's necessary. I'm also going to add retained expert witnesses for each side, because we don't want to have a trial in the media or in the public. We want it to be in the courtroom. Speaking of that, a comment on the cameras. They're in the courtroom now. And I have deferred my decision about cameras. One of the things that's going to be really important, that is very important, is that the people with the camera and media need to follow the rules. And we've had some issues where people were pushing the envelope, particularly focusing on the tables where counsel sits. You are not to turn your cameras toward the top of those tables. And if you do that, you're probably going to have to leave the courtroom. Also, one of the things that happened in the Daybell case is that the cameras just continued to focus on the defendant. Don't do that. That's what brought the cameras to have to leave the courtroom in that case. And what I would prefer, if you want to continue to have cameras in this courtroom, is to back off and not... Do we have that? Yeah, make sure that's muted. Make sure that we just have the totality of what is happening in the court. And not just focus, for example, on Mr. Koberger's face. So that was what happened in that case, and it's not appropriate. One other 
reminder to council uh, to speak, and I this is to myself, uh, to speak into the microphone so we can have a good record. All right, I think those are my uh, general <coughs> announcements or cautions, and uh, I think we've sort of boiled things down to some issues on a motion to compel discovery. Uh, some of those issues have been resolved, uh, some have not. So uh, let me go to you, uh, Ms. Taylor, to start off. Where do we, where do we start? Your Honor, we would request that we start on defendant's motion to compel and second motion to compel. I believe the third motion to compel will be heard on a different date. True. As it relates to the two motions to compel, and I'll present my arguments whenever the court's ready, but I can direct the court exactly to the numbers in those motions to compel that are still up for discussion today in the request of the ruling from the court. Excellent. I'm ready. On the original motion to compel, we are only seeking the court to order number six to be complied with in that, motion, in that particular motion. Okay, let me take a look at that, number six. And so this is uh, this is the motion to compel discovery that was filed on May 4th. Yes, Your Honor, that's correct. Number six. And that is request number 160. That is for request number 160, and that was in the second supplemental discovery request. Okay, thank you. All right. And we're getting, is that me? Okay, number six. For number six on that one, yes. On okay. the second motion to compel, Your Honor, we are leading the court to order on request number one, number four, number five, and I think that we have a plan for the other numbers, so those would be the three we need to work on. Thank you. Let me make sure we get the same page. Okay, number one is request one. Number four is request 23. I'm sorry, Your Honor, it's number two, request four. Okay, I apologize. Number two. And number five, which is request 109. Thank you. All right. And that's the second motion to compel discovery. Correct. All right. Do you want to make an argument about those? I would love to. Okay, go ahead. Thank you. Your Honor, first, I, I want to start with talking about the discovery process. As the court knows, we have been representing Mr. Koberger since the very end of December of 2022. And during the course of the last several months, there has been a lot of discovery that's been requested and a lot that's been supplied. Um, I come here asking the court to compel discovery. I'm seeking an order directing that we receive this discovery. I'm not seeking any other kind of sanction. I don't come here saying that the prosecutor has done something wrong. I come here saying that there are things that we have a disagreement about whether I should get them or when I should get them, and we seek a court order to assist us in, in this regard. Yesterday, we filed an exhibit um, that related to our motions to compel, and the purpose of that exhibit was to show the court how the discovery is coming in, and what we are weeding through to find, try to find the information, and to let the court know that our office is making extraordinary efforts. Mr. Koberger's team works nonstop, and when we ask for discovery, it's because we have reason to believe it exists. So it's, I, I wanted the court and counsel to be aware it's not a fishing expedition. These are real items that are really necessary to investigate this case and prepare Mr. Koberger's defense. 
So with that as the background and um, the frequent communication with the prosecutor's office to try to obtain the materials we need, we have come to an impasse in a few areas, and that's what brings us to court today. As the court knows, discovery is governed by statute 19-1309 and Idaho Criminal Rule 16. And the purpose of discovery is really to prevent an unfair trial, to prevent trial by surprise, and also to protect a charged person's rights to meet their defense. It protects their Sixth Amendment rights to have a sufficient um, and a, a prepared counsel, I should say, as we have a duty to investigate the case. So in preparing our case for Mr. Koberger, we've asked for several things that we still need. I'll talk first about request number six in the first motion to compel, and that stems from discovery request 160. It's training records. These are training records of three specific police officers. Your Honor, these, we have not asked for training records for every officer that has had anything to do with the case. I would not want to stand here and let the court think that this is an exhaustive list of the officers that we might need training records for. But these are three officers that we've requested them for and the state has indicated they're not willing to give us the training records. These three officers are officers that have each conducted critical interviews with critical witnesses in the case, made decisions about the interviews, made decisions about evidence, and conducted other kinds of investigations. We seek their training records to understand their processes. Those, the training records, Your Honor, they are records that we've been able to obtain from various police agencies in the past. And this circumstance are not records that I can find on my own. Uh, these are not things that are on the internet. They're not going to just hand them over to me. The two of the officers that we've requested them about are Idaho State Police officers. I have often received training records for Idaho State Police officers in the preparation of other cases during the course of my career. They are imperative for us to understand the specialty in interrogating and interviewing people and for making the decisions that they make with regard to things taken as evidence in the case or things followed up on or not followed up on. So that is the purpose for those records and we're asking the court to order the state to provide the training records for those three officers. Moving on then to our second motion to compel. And what we are looking for is a lot of information from the FBI CAST team, as well as the FBI forensic examiner team. What we're talking about here is the, the CAST team are the FBI examiners that use cell phone records to provide a lot of information that found its way into the probable cause affidavit that the state relied on in arresting Mr. Koberger. I had the opportunity to meet with the prosecutor and they indicate that we will be getting those items in number one and number six disclosed to us, but we don't know when. So I'm asking this court to issue an order with a date certain to obtain those records. These are bits of investigation that the FBI conducted that relate to Mr. Koberger's cell phone, and the state has relied on that in their affidavit to say that Mr. Koberger was in certain places at certain times. So these are bits of information and analysis that's been done since December. We are now at the end of June. We do not have those records yet, Your Honor. They are something that's been relied upon by the state for the PC affidavit to arrest Mr. Koberger, as well as to obtain a variety of search warrants. It's information that the state has agreed we should have, so we ask the court for an order with a deadline to get that. I want the court to know I don't think that Mr. Thompson or Ms. Jennings are trying to withhold this. I think they'll give it to me when they have it, but I think an order from the court saying this is the date certain 
may help them get the information a little bit more rapidly. I'll move on to our last request, and that's number two in the second motion to compel, request number four. And that has to do with the FBI forensic examiner that told the state to look for a white Hyundai Elantra. This is the examiner that originally there were certain years looked for, and that year range was expanded. I believe I have the communications between the police department and the FBI about how that date range changed, but what I don't have is the report from the examiner. I did receive the CD, curriculum vitae, from about the examiner late yesterday from the prosecutor's office, so I'm asking the court to order a deadline for the report to be given to the defense. Again, the court's read the probable cause affidavit that led to Mr. Koberger's arrest, and the court can see that this vehicle identification was heavily relied on by the state to arrest Mr. Koberger, as well as to obtain a lot of other search warrants. This is information that is very necessary for us to prepare our case. I don't think Mr. Thompson and Ms. Jennings are withholding anything. I think they don't have it, but I think we need a court order with a deadline so that we can get that. As the court is aware, the state has a duty to provide discovery to the defense. As the court is aware that not producing discovery, especially when it's material, can be a due process violation. And as the court is aware, the state has filed its notice of intent to seek death against Mr. Koberger. These are critical, relevant materials, all of them, including the police training records. They're necessary for us to prepare and present our defense of Mr. Koberger. They're necessary for us to do our investigation. They're necessary for us to prepare our case and our motion practice moving forward. These are things that we need to have. There is a heightened standard now that the state has filed its notice of intent to seek death, and these are very relevant, critical bits of information. They are discoverable, and we're asking the court to order that they be supplied to us. Mr. Thompson or Ms. Jennings? Ms. Jennings. So, Ms. Taylor's correct. She has everything that the state has in our possession. And we have worked diligently and consistently in getting her all the information that we have in a quick fashion. To date, we have discovered approximately about 13,000 pages of reports, 13,000 photographs, over 10,000 tips, and over 51 terabytes of audio and video information. So we are down to just a few points of disagreement. Sorry, am I a little closer? Is it okay if I say? Yes, yeah, that's fine. Thank you. First, with regard to item number six on the defendant's first motion to compel discovery, this involves training records of a couple of officers. Again, these are officers who the state would argue are not material to the case. They've interviewed other witnesses. They wouldn't even be called by the state to testify at trial. And the state objects to this because training records of specified officers aren't included within Bill 16. And they haven't proffered any reason as to why this would be needed for the preparation of their case. Again, these are investigators who have gone out and just interviewed some witnesses within the case. So we'd ask that you rule that this is outside Bill 16. I would just remind the court that several hundred investigators have been involved in this case. Our concern with allowing training records for these few, which we can't understand why there's a substantial need for these particular ones, wouldn't open the door to us then having to go and obtain training records for these hundreds of investigative officers who've been involved, some of which are outside of our control. Thank you. Thank you, counsel. We appreciate the briefs and arguments of counsel. We'll take the case under advisement.
Moving on to the second motion to compel. As to item number one, um, regarding cast information, um, Ms. Taylor has everything that we have. Um, I've also, um, that includes reports from MPD officers. Um, what she is seeking is a specific report um, from the FBI cast team, which I have indicated to her is in its final stages of review. Um, and we are anticipating receiving sooner rather than later. And as soon as we do, we will turn that over. Sooner than later. Well, I, I don't have a date certain, um, but within the next few weeks. I think I think uh, Ms. Taylor wants a date. I don't have a date. Not <laughs> I've asked for a date, but um, that is not how the federal bureaucracy works. That's uh, how about we say something like. Uh, July 14th, unless there's some reason yes. that they can't get that to you. No objection. That would be Ms. Taylor? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. And then um, the state has substantially complied with request number four, which is the same types of information, but related to the identification of the vehicle. Um, would ask for the exact same date certain of July 14th, only to obtain, if there is one, a potential report that's outstanding. Okay. Acceptable. Ms. Taylor? Yes, Your Honor. And again, I mean, if there's some itch in that, I mean, we can explore that and see what we can do to fix it. Looking for the that takes care of that. Thank you, Ms. Jennings. Uh, anything to respond to, uh, Ms. Taylor? Yes, Your Honor. I um, want to be heard a little bit more on the police training records. I am aware that over 120 officers were involved in the investigation in this case. I am not asking for all 120 officers. I will tell the court that likely there are other officers training records that I would want. This is within Idaho Criminal Rule 16. These are records, and documents, and objects that may have information relevant to Mr. Koberger's investigation and defense. These are records that are likely of witnesses. Whether or not the state calls them, they are likely to be witnesses. The three that I'm asking for now, they have critical roles at various stages. One of the officers did a spillman search for 2011 to 2013 under the Elantras to give to the FBI to look through these. One of them, that same officer assisted in the search for Elantras. This same officer interviewed witnesses from the scene of 1122 King Road on the 13th of November. This officer did follow up with some of the key witnesses in the case. This officer signed an Ada County lab agreement, and this officer handled and collected evidence. The second officer that I seek the information from did an interview with a key witness that's expected to testify when this case goes to trial. This officer also mentioned a, a specialty of working with victims and trauma victims. I think those training records are very relevant. The interview of this key witness was one of multiple interviews of this same key witness by various law enforcement officers. There is a lot of information in the various interviews that are, that's going to come into trial. This officer may well be subpoenaed by the defense to come to trial. That person's training records are very relevant. The last officer did multiple, multiple interviews, I think a dozen or so, many of them after the arrest of Mr. Cobra. This officer also interviewed key witnesses in the case. This officer attended the autopsy proceedings. This officer followed up on tips. This officer made decisions about the tips that were given to law enforcement. 
and this officer also collected bits of evidence. Those functions that police officers make daily in their jobs, they make decisions about a case that later comes to court. They've made decisions about the case the state's going to present against Mr. Coburn. They've talked to key witnesses. How would they do their job? How they were trained to do their job and what they relied on is incredibly important. When they take the stand, they will say, based on my training and experience, I have a criminal rule 16 talks about witnesses. This is information that the defense needs to conduct its investigation and preparation. Any response to that? Well, I had a look. I thought maybe you wanted to say something else. Not necessarily, other than just to reiterate that this isn't covered by rule 16, except for if the state were going to rely upon these witnesses and call them at trial. And then at that point, we would furnish all of that. Much of what Ms. Taylor is saying is just pure speculation. You could say pure speculation, except she just had quite a list of what these particular officers were involved in the investigation. So we'll sort that out. Is that it with the motions to compel? For today, Your Honor. For today, of course. No motions from the state. Is that right? OK. Well, I'm going to take this under advisement, look at the rules, some case law, and get a written decision out. So with that, we're adjourned. Thank you all. Have a good rest of your day.